information about a deadly uh, yes. Yeah. Um, let's see. We have brand new video tonight showing the moments after Atlanta officers shot and killed a man inside a Buckhead restaurant. And now we first brought it to you as breaking news last night at 11 o'clock at Fogo de Chao when that man shot a security guard. 24 hours later, we are getting a better idea of what happened before the shots were fired from someone who was actually sitting next to 22-year-old Nigel Cullens. 11 Live's Hope Ford spoke with that witness who saw what happened before things turned deadly. That's right. The witness says they were waiting for a table, so they sat at the bar right next to Cullens. She says the tension built slowly. First, everything was fine. Then he started shouting things and tried to kick her when she tried to move away. And after that, things became terrifying. 63 shots fired, 63 shots fired. This is how the night ended at Fogo de Chao, but it's not how the night began for Amanda and her friends who sat next to Nigel Cullens as they waited for a table. The guy honestly was just quiet and he just looked really well dressed, a really nice looking. Oh, it's a white woman. Yeah, yeah, white woman. Oh. Guy. But over several minutes, Amanda says Cullen's behavior changed. He starts just mumbling and mouthing and getting louder and louder and just saying absurd things. Amanda says she got nervous after hearing. He said, I'm dumb. But you can't you can't say nothing because you're black. Man. You're supposed to just turn up all your, your logical glider fucking high Q evolved to problem solve instincts to not be racist. I'm telling you, man, like they should have moved a long time ago. They should have gotten away from that guy. Should have called the waiter over and asked for another table. Behavior changed. He starts just mumbling and mouthing and getting louder and louder and just saying absurd things. Amanda says she got nervous after hearing. He said, I'm about to go off in this. So I got up and I walked over to the host stand to the security guard. And I said, are you guys not going to do anything about this guy? And he whispered, he has a gun. We have to wait until the cops get here. It was then. What? Wow. What the fuck? Holy shit. Wow. Fuck, I'm Karen. Holy shit. Yo, privilege. Karen I'll set him off. Welcome <laughs> to America, yeah. shit. Oh, man. Son's got so much privilege. He whispered, he has a gun. We have to wait until the cops get here. It was then, Amanda says, things made sense. There was a bartender who was staying far away from us. He was very quiet. Amanda says she saw Cullens smash a glass on the floor, and her party decided to head for the door when police arrived and approached him. They tried to arrest him, it looked like, immediately. And he slipped out, and, and he went to the floor. But right after that, there, were, there was a gunshot, so that's when I took off running. Amanda's boyfriend took this video moments after the shooting stopped. Amanda calls the night chaotic and terrifying. We're just looking for a cover because the gunshots are going off. Like, there's so many. I mean, I probably heard 10 to 15 gunshots. I, I truly think that if the cops hadn't shot him, many people would have been shot. And Amanda says... Oh, wow. So, um, this, this happened two years ago, but there's an update now there's an update now but this happened two years ago but it's 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 coming full circle because it's election season she oh, saw man. officers tase cullens but it didn't work she also says at one point cullens encouraged people to call the cops i don't want to see another mother that's out there struggling and their worst fear is being killed by a cop mother expressing Big her mama. heartbreak Yo, lies, lies, yeah. and more lies. A little dramatic. Yo, I you never see these niggas get dramatic over the hundreds of shootings in they city over here. I don't want to see another mother that's out there struggling, and their worst fear is being killed by a cop. Mother expressing her heartbreak and anger just hours after she finds out her son was shot and killed by Atlanta police inside of Fogo de Chao in Buckhead. Now, this is video from inside the restaurant moments after the shooting. The family says Nigel Cullens was suffering a mental health crisis and ended up at Fogo de Chao, where a confrontation ended up with Cullens allegedly Smash. shooting a security guard and then police shooting him. 11 Alive's Brittany Klein Peter is live now 
at the restaurant. Brittany. Nigel's mother tells me she's absolutely devastated that her son lost his life here and that she tried to get him help just hours before this all unfolded at this restaurant. She shared this photo with him. Take a photo of him with us. Take a look at it. Colin's parents say that he was 22 years old and that yesterday afternoon they believed he was not in the right state of mind. They called 911 to try to get him to a hospital, but that it took way too long for help to arrive and their son left the house. I let them know my son has mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Not sure if he used any substances in reference to pills, Mary, I don't know. But I explained to them in great detail my biggest fear when I got on the phone with them. I said he's an African American male. Oh my Please God. Make sure <laughs> if your kid's <laughs> having a mental breakdown, you shouldn't give him a fucking gun, dummy. <laughs> this whole story I captures very really well what at least I consider the biggest problem in America. The, the destruction of a society. I get with your family and fuck with a child. And this yeah. motherfucker does what he does. And then, of course, right behind him is this bitch who does big, what she does. Mama. Bro, big That's mama is going to protect the son at all costs. Buckhead was a nice place, I thought. I thought that was like the... Oh, uh, Sons, been, sons always mess up everything, man. You, have you, you been know. to Fogo the Child? Yeah, it's Fogo the Child. I mean, if he's there, Fogo the Child's not the same. I mean, no, it's all it takes is him being there. There's a bunch of some people that go, I, 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 I've said this several times, there's some people everywhere in there. What the fuck? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, what are we supposed to do? What is it, one of the Chinese there. places where they throw the food at you? Mind you, no. most of these people, they're normal people, right? They're like people like us trying to fucking live their life. Fucking yeah. a pin in the fucking ass. Yeah, these people are insufferable, man. Um, Damn, wicked coming with fire. My biggest fear when I got on the phone with him, I said he's an African-American male. Please make sure whoever shows up is trained and knowledgeable. So when they deal what? with my son, I don't have to worry about my son being killed. She should have said bulletproof. This shit they need to cool. send someone that's bulletproof to deal with him. Like, you got to be trained in, like, dealing with fucking mentally deranged son men. Like, no, nigga. Armed mentally deranged son men. Why, you gotta be a sun man specialist to fucking like nah bro like this that yeah, privilege man. entitlement shit these niggas be on bro yeah they, they should have sent one of these uh caseworkers when they said it was a brother on brother fuck it send a yeah. caseworker she like yeah make sure one uh uh don't send one of them cops send one of them uh them uh social workers that got uh, a phd in uh and African male studies, like no. She ordered that no cop. Shit. She ordered that cop like you order a steak, man. Dang. She Dang. was like, "Yo, I want that joke." She's, "I want a medium well, medium well cut on the bias." Like, yo, do you do you understand that when they when you call a cop, man, the cops that are driving around that beat are gonna be the first ones to respond, and it's random. And they Whoever's go closest to get as fast as they can to get there and handle the scene. You can't be on there talking about some. Yeah, I'd like a cop. Um, I, I would like my cop um, this way and that way, and then I would like. No, nah, motherfucker, this ain't. I need no a macchiato, man. Right. I need a cop to be five foot eight, brown yeah. hair. He's got to be black, of course. But but I, you put it well. You put you put it very well when you said. When you said <clears throat> the, the cops collectively in this country should get a fucking award for how much they don't shoot sun men, as much interactions as they have with them. Yes. The fact that they shoot twice as many white men every year with a thousand fold less interactions. I mean, the amount of interactions a cop has in a white community. I live in a, in, in a, in a white town. I drive around, I go places. The cops are not interacting with these white people. They're interacting with the small percentage of some people that are here. 
per capita. And they still shoot more white guys than they shoot black guys. And uh, it's um, insane. Um, I uh new guy in the back, but um bro, don't you think this like some this like that liberal racism shit, like yo, you know, black people act a certain way, and it's like so you saying so you're acknowledging that it's a difference, bro. It's not just like right. these cops just shooting them; they, they act differently. But then when you, right. when you bring that up, then they're gonna be like, "No, it's just racism." Yeah, it's a soft <laughs> bigotry of low expectations. It's you, you, if it's I expect less bigoted, from though. you, it's it's not you, bigoted though, because because like it's it's bigoted only if there are truly no differences. But it's on, but the. I don't have a problem with it. It's just that on the front end, they act like it isn't. Correct. That's the problem. And then if you act, and then if you acknowledge that it's a difference, they're going to call you a racist, even then though they believe asshole. the same yeah. way based on the ideologies they they try yeah. to prescribe on society. But she's yeah. acknowledging that there's a difference, and she's acknowledging that you know you need to be extra sensitive and you need to be extra patient. With her son because he's a black man. Yeah, she ordered that shit up like a pizza. Literally, yeah. just because he's black. No other reason yeah. is because he's black. That's literally yeah. like. Collins ended up going to the Buckhead Fogo de Show restaurant where he used to work. Someone from oh, the restaurant called 911 that an unruly patron had a gun. Police say they responded, and at one point, a security guard tackled Collins. That's when they say Collins pulled out his gun and shot the guard, leading police to shoot Collins, killing him. The guard survived in Atlanta. So he he shot a security guard before he got shot. So they, so remember that. Was at the hospital. Coming up tonight, I'm going to speak with Collins' parents and more about the 22-year-old and his history with mental health, as well as whether police were aware of his history with mental health before arriving here at this restaurant. <laughs> It Thank doesn't you for change the, anything. At least the second shooting involving Atlanta police at a Buckhead restaurant okay, in so less than a month. Me, Just two. Let me go ahead. Just, a lot of people. Hold on. Hold on. People let me that. let me show you the part. The the um. So now it's a it's an update. Hold on. Let me. Wait. Um, so the son man killed somebody before you got shot? No, he shot the security yeah, guard, but the security guard survived. Oh, okay. Yes, the and, mother skipped that part. Yeah, yeah, just because yeah, you're yeah. having a mental breakdown doesn't give you license to do whatever the right, fuck bro. you want to do. Yeah, you know, like people forget that. Yeah, they probably wrong. grabbed him in a bear hug. The guy shot him in the in the in the leg, and yeah, then the cops, you know, did yeah, what they needed to do. Yeah, that's why I don't give sons the mental health shit, bro. Like you open no, up no. Pandora after you give them that, you open up Pandora's box for these niggas. Exactly. Bro. They know. Yeah, uh, you can't. You can't give them an inch. What if it's one thing I know about sons? They itching for an excuse, bro. Yeah, and all, he, of, all of son and Stan is mentally ill. What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, we, having low IQ is a mental illness, man. I mean, it, it is. is. It's, it's literally a mental illness. Like, mm. <laughs> people don't want. Especially if you're them. around. If you're around in a multicultural society, like in a multicultural society, like that's a definitely a mental illness because you're around other people who think differently. So look at who's talking. Yeah, I mean, it's not just the guy that you It's just, you know, I, not a day go by we don't think about it. And the day that it happened, and now it just feels good that we, we're actually to a point where we're going to see transparency open from the city, from everybody who was involved in my son's passing. And for me, um, I think I'm still in a state of disbelief because I've feel like it shouldn't have happened, especially not the way that it did. And I remember <laughs> the staff kept their hands off of him while he was acting crazy and 
putting all their the customers in danger. The police show up. A security guard intervenes before the police tackles him. He shoots the security guard. The security guard gets shot. Then the police shoot him. And he, he says it shouldn't have happened. And the fact that we are still standing here and fighting to get answers. Thankfully, we obviously have just filed a lawsuit to get the transparency, transparency that we need, get the honesty, and to clear myself. That's another word I hate they taught you, son, terms, transparency. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I want her to spell it. In order to file a lawsuit for something, you have, you have to be able to spell it. I look at it as a, almost like how I get through the grieving process is that Nigel's life wasn't in vain. It's something bigger. So like I said before, you know, you pick the wrong child, but you pick the right mother. So because of that, we're going to do this as parents, because Nigel came from two parents. I start home with love. The siblings, and as you can see, in everything that we did from protests to everything that we could do, community events, it's all in honor of Nigel because Atlanta Police Department took something that we can never get back. Get back. Some fucking fool ass nigga, thug ass, fool ass nigga. That's what that's what they're telling you that they can't get back. Like they lost. I remember last night on Rumble, that kid. He was an army. I mean, he was a he was a he was a fire department cadet. Yeah. He was a police cadet. Yeah, he was into everything. Played basketball and just got killed in a freak encounter with a diabolical son man. That right there yeah. is what you act like this over. But they didn't even act like that. His family didn't even do that. Yep. They they ain't have nearly this much energy for that for that son man. I'm gonna do this as parents because Nigel came from two parents. I start home with love, the siblings, and as you can see, in everything that we did from protests to everything that we could do, community events, it's all in honor of Nigel because Atlanta Police Department took something that we could never get back. Get back. I'm gonna do four quick questions. I'll move aside to the but I'm gonna read the <laughs> But his brief accusations of failures in the system from over the child to police to the security to health care system. Absolutely. I mean, how much of it, what is the cost of failure? Someone's life. Yeah, and I think the key is that this family wants transparency, justice, and honesty. And to have to wait two years to get to that shows a complete failure of the system. Uh, so. System oh, failed them. Yeah, they're going to complain. Like, once they get all the facts, they're just going to complain about how long it took them to get the facts. And, um, she, uh, the sister, Big Mama said, uh, you know, uh, he came from two parents. Like, she was hyped as shit. But that's also an indictment, bro. I'm, I'm, I keep harping on this, bro. For the black conservative niggas, that's like, oh, all the, they just had a dad, you know. Yeah. Just the single mamas and shit, bro. It's, you know, all we need is, is dads in the house. Like, yeah. this nigga had a dad, bro. Yeah. Uh, that's a culture thing. Uh, we want to get to that end, and that's why it's incumbent upon us to continue to stand with this family. But let's be clear. What happened on May the 18th of 2022 was a travesty of justice. You had a young man in the throes uh, of a mental uh, health crisis. And instead of sending crisis interveners, they sent. Oh my God! There it is. There it is. Yo, I, I can't. I can't. This shit frying my yeah, brain. This is crazy. Yeah, this. This frying my brain. I can't. I want. I, I want to choke this motherfucker. Crisis intervener with a dude with a fucking gun. In a restaurant That's full of erratic. fucking people. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I just don't see what these people think they're gonna do. So fucking retarded. This shit is just weird. They all got the same bumper sticker sayings. Yeah. Uh, this you, is, play, this you, is, make a, you can make a drinking game out of this shit. Transparency and justice. Oh, you I mean, they're, they're drunk already. Yeah, you'd be dead. 
the this system. Is the we already blame the system. Then the uh, asking for like a gorilla whisperer to be on like the police force at all times. <laughs> yeah, a silverback whisperer who can deal with a forty cal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and 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 not ever mentioning that he was menacing a group of women. And he shot a security guard. Not mentioning yes. any of it. Sons are just kind of allowed to beat up women. They just kind of get to do it, especially if they're white or Chinese or whatever. Definitely, definitely. But she had a young man in the throes of a mental health crisis. And instead of sending crisis interveners, they sent law enforcement. And then to compound that, to not be honest about what happened first year, the second year, and now we are here. And so, you know, what we're calling on is the release of the body cam footage. You know, it does not take two years to investigate a case. It does not take two years to be honest and transparent what happened in that restaurant because of the actions of uh, the security guard and the law. Oh, this happened because of the actions of the security guard and the law enforcement. Yo, no not her armed kid that's got a mental problem bitch you knew he had a gun and think There's about no it one. when they get the body cam right when they get the body cam it's going to be an issue with that it's going to be an issue with that that somehow they yeah they took too long to give us the body cam it's, going, it's, listen, edited. it's never going yeah it's never going to be per it's yeah, never it's, going to be enough they act like all this shit will like help change their minds, but it never does, bro. Nothing changes these niggas' minds. Once the like the narrative is the narrative, bro. Everybody just wants to kill black people for no reason, bro. That's the narrative they're gonna stick to. Yep, and they believe it. Like when if it's our in my community, when there's somebody gets killed by the cops, it's like, oh, what were they doing? That person's a fuck up. And then here you're always innocent. You're just changing your life. You were walking blind nuns to school. Yeah, All that. Right. Yeah. Not be honest about what happened first year, second year, and now we are here. And so, you know, what we're calling on is the release of the body cam footage. You know, it does not take two years to investigate a case. It does not take two years to be honest and transparent what happened in that restaurant because of the actions of uh, the security guard and the law and law enforcement. So uh, I think what the family is trying to get across is this was their beloved son. Yeah. This was someone they were trying to get assistance for that day and to still face stonewalling uh, is, is atrocious. So again, we're calling on the city of Atlanta to be transparent, uh, to give justice to this family. Uh, we're calling on the continued investigation of the district attorney's office and charges to be brought uh, against this officer and anybody else involved. But most importantly, Damn, they want charges against not only the officer, but anybody else. All these people who came, these heroes that showed up at this fucking restaurant heroically, or this fucking jackass was putting everybody in fucking danger. They want all those people charged. These the these the good black people though. Exactly. These are the good ones. ones. The uh, probably upper middle class. Look at their curve. It's probably upper middle class, mm -hmm. and they still cape for nigga shit, bro. That's why I'm. It's 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 the entire group. It's not yep. just the criminals. It's their parents. It's their uh, neighborhood. Oh yeah. It's every everybody colludes for niggas. Uh, right. Oh, it's These a cult. People are complicit. These people it's, are definitely complicit. Just like the white gliders that believe that shit. That's their their cult brainwashed too. You know, and the black community is just brainwashed in this other direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I don't know if this is brainwashing though. This is just like well, brainwashing and DNA and all the other this, reasons. This you've is got. just this is just this is just the way they are, man. Like right, yo, this right, is right. They see this system as a as a lit. They see they see this system as oh shit, this shit is sweet. You mean there's <laughs> this 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 way like yeah, there's room for this. 
And if, if the they Savannah. was on the, yeah, the chief would have just been like, the chief would have sent his motherfucking um, guards <laughs> to the fucking hut, and he was over there acting up. Man, them guards would have fucking smacked them up and fucking beat his ass and killed them. And the mother would have been, if and the mother better not have said boo. <laughs> Yeah, he better not have said nothing about that. Oh the yeah, medicine man. medicine man would believe he had special powers and crush up his bones. And the... Yeah, definitely, was, man. Yeah, they Yo, just want, this they is... just want them to release the footage so they could do what some people always do: fucking nitpick every fucking frame, every single that, frame. Yeah, they just want to. Oh any... look, he's blocking the camera with his elbow on purpose. Like the sun man could be brandishing a weapon, aiming it at everybody in there, and they'll just ignore everything he's doing. Fuck but, point. He already shot one. <laughs> but everything like, everybody else is doing this like he didn't do it the uh, the perfect fucking he wasn't double oh seven uh trying to uh take this sun yeah. man down. So he need to go to prison. Exactly. And and they're gonna be like when 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 he shot the security guard, they're gonna be like, "Well, the security guard, he was he ain't no cop. Why did he intervene? I mean, you know what I'm saying? He ain't no law enforcement. If he wouldn't have got in, if he wouldn't have got involved, he he didn't know he was a security guard. He thought he was just a guy. How did he not know? How do how if you're in there and somebody just comes and grabs you from behind?" How do you know that that's a security guard? They're going to do all yeah. that Negro shit and all of that <laughs> stuff. And it's going to be like, and it's going and, and listen, they're not, the police department is not out of the woods. We're mm -hmm. laughing and shit about how ridiculous this is. But in real life, that police department, they're not comfortable that this is over with. They're not comfortable that nobody's going to be charged. On their, on none of their officers are gonna be charged. They don't well, sleep well at that police department. Nope. And God forbid one of them fucked up and said something stupid on their camera. You know, man. God forbid they turn their the, their camera off. One of them turned their camera off. God forbid one of them in the past. I'm talking about previous in 1998. Had a complaint from a, another black person that was a racial complaint, or some shit like that, or said some some kind of derogatory thing. Rude all joke. that's coming up. Everything's coming up from all of them. The um, usually in things like this, the the, the um, chief has to step down. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to give them something. You have to give them some red meat. You know what I'm saying? Placate so them can, in some yeah, way. Just so that they can um just so shut know, the so, fuck up and move on. Yeah, it's like it's like, yeah, so you have to you have to um give them something. So they they and they, and they want something. Like even if you charge one of the officers with something, even if you like, yo, we know you didn't do nothing. Look, you know, it's kind of fucked up, but you know, we gotta charge you with something, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna charge it's it's no jail time. But you know, it's just gonna be on your record, and you know yeah. what I'm saying. But oh, and you're not gonna be a cop anymore, and you're gonna lose your retirement and your house. So yeah, it's go. just a ton of ton of things that black people do. Like, has anyone has anyone worked at a workplace where a black guy got fired and they didn't sue? They talk about suing. Well, I, I did. I worked at Home Depot, but I I will say this: the majority, like not the majority, a lot of Sun people. When I worked at Home Depot, because they would take you in the back in the um, room, and then you know it would have you sign all your paperwork, your exit paperwork and stuff. When they and they would have to walk through the store to leave, right? And a lot of times they would destroy things and turn over displays and knock down shelves on their way out. <laughs> <laughs> black, it's black severance, man. You just get yeah. that payoff. So that you don't temper say. tantrum that you get to throw on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> you fired me because I took a six hour lunch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Jamal just got fired. Everybody lock everything down so he can't throw it everywhere. No shit. Remember yeah. how Kmart, they used to have that blue light? 
Just have a black light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, black light. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this right here is evil though. These people are evil trying to destroy life. They're trying to destroy lives over a fucking dude who I guarantee you, her and her husband, with that fool in the house. Right, that crazy motherfucker. Good. I want to see a thought bubble of that bitch's head. She's probably like, oh, God, I'm so glad they killed that motherfucker. They didn't sleep well when he was in the house. Oh, yeah. And think about it. He's got a gun, and they're the authority figures. They're the authority figures in that house, so he's diametrically opposed to them in that dynamic. You think right. they slept well with him in that fucking house being as crazy as he was? I don't know. They were afraid to. Like I said, the bad her, her thought bubble. Her thought bubble is, oh, thank God. It's over. Now if I can just get this check. To this family. Uh, we're calling on the continued investigation of the district attorney's office and charges to be brought uh, against this officer and anybody else involved. But most importantly, we are calling on the city to clear his name. You know, it's not enough for, you know, the NAACP and its attorneys to see the video. It's not enough for members of his family to see the video. The community needs to see the video. They need to see 10 shots being fired into Nigel Cullens. Five shots, a pause, standing over him and walking around, and then five more shots. Justify why he was treated in such a manner. And I know from the narrative that's been put out there, and again, the tape speaks for itself. You have to explain how a man who was giving up, he hadn't committed a crime, but had his hands... He shot the security guard. Yeah. No, they, yeah, they, they trust me. If the NAACP saw that shit and they didn't make a stink about it, then fuck, man. There's something wrong with that tape. Hands up, was tased. It was that tasing that led to all of the other incidents. It was that attempt by the security guard who has not been summoned by anybody to See, tackle I him. told you. There it security is. guard. He just a security <laughs> guard. He ain't no real <laughs> yeah. guard. He just like a regular person, man. He ain't no crisis <laughs> intervention. Uh, was the tased. fact that a diner was needs a security tased. guard is a problem. Don't they realize that? Yeah. No, 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 no restaurant here has a fucking bouncer. That attempt by the security guard who has not been summoned by anybody to tackle him and then the gun went off. We don't know who pulled the gun. We don't know how the gun went off. We know it went off. But then... <laughs> Yo, this nigga. Ten shots. Five... And then a pause. And, and remember when the other guy a couple weeks ago, he got shot 96 times, so it was like 96 shots. Now this is only 10. That was 10 shots. 10. And they had shot him three times. Three whole shots. Not a, it's always yeah. harping on the number of shots. Uh, yeah. and <laughs> some, somehow, we don't know how the gun went off on his side. Could have been yeah. anything. His gun. Yeah. His gun, yeah. No, we have no idea how that went off. Yeah. These fucking people are Jeez. so disgusting. So dishonest. And the media just allows them to just talk this bullshit. Yep. They get a platform for this dumb ass shit. Exactly. They're propping them up. Here, look at these idiots. And then five more. How do you justify that? Those are questions that are going to be answered by the lawsuit. You know Absolutely. All I wanted was transportation. We waited over two hours to get someone to even come out to see about it. And then not even 30 minutes later, Nigel went to an unknown location, which later learned that it was the restaurant. And my oh, so before, so they're, they're mad at the cops because he was at the house tripping. And they called the house, they called the cops when he was tripping at the house. And he left the house and went somewhere else. So they're saying the cops took too long to get to the house. So they want the cops punished because they took too long to get there. <sighs> going to be answered by the lawsuit. You believe that officers failed to 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All I wanted was transportation. We waited over two hours to get someone to even come out to see about it. And then not even 30 minutes later, Nigel went to an unknown location, which later learned that it was a restaurant. And my son was pronounced deceased, not even 45 minutes at that point. So, yes. The Think about her timeline. He's at the house tripping to the point where they got to call the police. Well, and I'm it's sure her easy. call was like, my baby's having a bad day. Will you come send a cop? But she didn't say, my house is on fire. Then she oh, hell no, dude. Then he leaves and goes to his old job, and then he's pronounced dead. <laughs> he leaves everything out. Like, all the good part. That's like that's like literally telling you Saving Private Brian was like a movie about some guys um went to Europe and um and you know had an adventure and they came back. <laughs> like I mean, what the fuck? It's like it's like you know, <laughs> like her her fucking timeline is he was at the house, we called the police to come to come get him and transport him to like a medical facility or something like that. They took too long. He went to his job and he was pronounced dead. Because he was killed by the police. Yeah, that's some logic. The system had failed my son and a city of Atlanta and the restaurant owes us more than just an apology that we have never received. The restaurant owes her something too. It's everybody else. The restaurant was literally just being there. Like they were opera, they were <laughs> open for business. That's the only thing they did wrong. It's, like, yeah. um, it's like when uh that, that sun man almost drowned. And yeah. now they try to sue that business like just for existing. While a sun man was right for being next to our lake or whatever the fuck it was. It's yeah. like it's like Wendy's, man, when they burned down the Wendy's because um Rashad Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it's like it's the Wendy's fault. <sighs> Fucking Wendy's, you gotta pay for this shit. Yeah. Well, being that I called at 5 11 p.m., found him a bed, then called 911 for help, if they would have came, even if they would have came 30 minutes later, even an hour later, maybe an hour and 30 minutes later, he would still be. Yeah, but ma'am, your city is a fucking war zone in every, like, it's not just one war zone. There's like 20 different war zones going on in your city. And they're Where 380 people short or something crazy. The police are stretched yeah. thin. They don't have... Right, that's like, what I mean. They're like 400 in a hole. Yeah, they're stretched thin and, they, and, and, and they're doing the best they can to deal with real street crime. People getting mugged, robbed, raped, assaulted, home invasions. It's going right. to take a little while to come pick your son up and drive him to a mental institution like yeah. we're fucking uber and shit for fucking crazy people why didn't she do it if it was so bad like, why well, she was so control that nigga because exactly. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yo listen i'm telling you them they never they didn't sleep well with him in that house i promise you fuck no it's and, like a lit dynamite stick in the next room <laughs> him him in that house with that fucking gun. They didn't see if they would if if they could control him. This big ass Negro right here would have controlled him if he could. This big ass Negro with all these tats called the fucking police on his son because he couldn't control him. See, you know, it's like no sense of urgency. Where a mother is calling, pleading for someone to come and to help us. 
paid our son to take him to a facility. And then they came like, I mean, how long? It was almost two hours. Two later. hours later. And yeah. then when they pull up, no sense of urgency. It's just like I told them when they pulled up, I was like, he, you know. He just left. He just left. You they know? didn't ask questions. Why didn't you stop him from leaving? Oh, because you can't control him. <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> fucking control him. Salute to Questions and ask what he what direction. They didn't ask what no. he had on. They Which had way did he go? Got no back interest, in, got back yeah. in the vehicle and left. And uh how did he get to that restaurant? Do you have a car? <laughs> Well, my sister saw the video and my pastor saw the video. I personally didn't want to see the video because um, I don't think I could handle seeing the video. From what they told me and what I heard, Nigel was fearful. That's why when the police officers came in, he was sitting still at the bar eating with people around him so he would not be threatened. And That's not what the people who sitting at the table next to him said. He, yeah, and, and, and if people saw the video, what the fuck is she crying about? I didn't. And now I want to see the video, bitch. You, two other people already saw it. Talk to them. Yeah, his story is conflicting with the people that were there. Yeah, the, the first thing they said was that like we want to see the video, and now it's like, oh no, well we did see it. We were given the opportunity to see it. Like the fuck? Lying. That's Girl, what I'm saying. People are always lying. They want it released so that like everybody can like have a stab at it and it can become like a fucking thing. A yeah, big they, thing and shit. Yeah. Like they should have released it. It's like, but it it's like it, it, uh, see, I, I'm definitely yeah, go ahead. Just tell a fucking no. No. There, done. Yeah. I'm definitely okay with body cams, but like I can see where it like as a matter of privacy, cops shouldn't be able to just release all the body cam footage they have of the arrest. It depends on specific circumstances. You know, and they probably gotta clear all those circumstances to release this shit. Yeah, it's it's just it's I'm just, just tired um, of the pandering. Just tell somebody fucking no for once. Yeah, try tell <laughs> telling these people no. Yeah, uh, I think I think it would be very hard to just talk to these people like that. Um, but I do think that you gotta you you can be firm. But yeah, just telling you like like when we saw see this story, what was that Honolulu or something? And that white guy was just talking crazy to those Hawaiians and shit. Like, listen, man, you can't talk to black people like that. We we're special. We got you got to treat us with kick gloves, man. And everyone knows that, and they know that too. That's why they're acting like this. And with that being said, when the officer came, he immediately put his hands up and got down to the ground. His eyes were big, and my sister said it was like he was so fearful for his life at that point. So, all I can think is that. He was going through a mental health crisis, but he was also surrendering and he didn't even do anything wrong. So to me, he had more sense than the people who were coming to provide whatever service or whatever the reason. So her son had more sense than the police officers. And they were out there for, but it wasn't because he committed a crime, it's because he did. And I think what's clear from the tape is that Nigel had committed no crime. He was merely eating at the bar not been asked to pay for the meal police encountered him as soon as he saw the police he get, get, put his hands up and was on the, in the process of going to the ground got to the ground and that's when he was tased the tasing agitated him and thus led to him getting up because again if you're giving up and somebody tases you the normal reaction is for you to try to escape the pain but you could clearly see the fear in his eyes when he turned around and saw law enforcement there. And he did what any um, individual who understands what's happening, he put his hands up and he got on the ground. How do you feel like, like the next person here is, because again, ADB said that they got the call. That shit did not make no. Man, now I want to see the fucking video. 
Yeah, me too. Let's fucking release that shit so we can see. Like, that motherfucker probably turn around and scream and yell at him with his hands up in the air. I don't believe tripped, any of this shit. Tripped over his own fucking shoelace. Hands up and he got on the ground. So I want to answer this. I want you to go back to um, the footage, and I'm sure this is public knowledge. When they first made a phone call, what did they report? They said it was a black man that was at the bar with spiky hair and appears to have gold teeth. And the operator asked, what is he doing? They said that he wasn't doing anything at that moment, right? Yes, that's correct. So let's talk to, let's go back to the facts of two calls now coming in. Again, repeatedly saying it is a black male that is at the bar. It's like, oh hair. my god. That's his description. That's that's the description. They asked for like do you does she understand that even if you don't give a description, the dispatch is gonna ask you for one? Appears to have gold teeth. At this point, the operator appeared to be frustrated because it was no crime, but she reiterated that help was coming, but still was clueless of why they were even coming. So that's why we are- That like, never oh. happened. Due to that phone call that you're asking a reference to those questions, that something is unclear. Something is not being told. So I want to know what was said throughout all phone calls, as well as when the police, Atlanta Police Department came on the premise. And I think the most important thing here is not what the police say, but what the video actually shows, shows what exactly. the witnesses actually said. And with all due respect to law enforcement, their job is not to craft the narrative. Their job is to respond to what actually happened. So as she said, there are two 911 calls that are clear. There's no crime that's in process. There's no crime that's been committed at that point. A police appear. They speak to one of the uh, managers or someone associated with the restaurant, and that's where uh, the, the haziness comes in as to what was actually going on. But you can actually see from the body cam and the surveillance footage, there was no crime being committed. And so once they encountered him, and he had not committed a crime, and he turned around, saw what they were doing. Again, the gun is not visible. You can't see a gun. He's putting it. So think about this. They called the police to come get him from the location they were at. Yet, for no reason, bitching, they're bitching and moaning about the people who called the police to come get him from the other location. <laughs> right, right. And on top of that, didn't they? Didn't they say that? Didn't they just say that? Like the first thing the cops did was go in and tase him. Now they're saying they spoke to the manager. Then they went over to, like. Yeah, it, 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 it doesn't. One thing about it is, is, is if you let them talk, that's why it's good to let them talk a lot. And where's the Let's part where he that. shot the security guard? Right, right. And all three of those fuckers have been screaming, fuck the police and all this hard shit for you. Defund the police. Well, guess what happens when you defund the police? Response times go up. Why? Because there aren't any fucking police. Yeah. And on top of that, people don't want to fucking become cops. Anymore. I want. Where was your fucking uh, crisis intervention person supposed to get paid from? You already took how many billion dollars from the police department across the country? Fuck you, bitching and crying. Fuck. They were been screaming, burn the police down. Fuck the police. Fuck twelve. All this. Now, first thing to do is call the police. Oh, help me, help me. Help control my unruly silverback who's got a fucking Glock. <laughs> yeah. This and I ain't is, sleeping at night because that big motherfucker could go off at any time. So please come get him. Restaurant calls. Hey, we got a crazy silverback in here with a fucking Glock. Oh, that's not. Is that her Glock? Is that her gorilla? I don't know. Not my monkey, not my circus. Let's go. Yeah, yo. Yo, Bill's got a little uh, yak in him, man. <laughs> yeah, Bill. Bill <laughs> yo, what the fuck going on? But yeah, this is um, yeah, yeah. This this um, 
this is this is a this is on display like if you ever wanted to know like what these people are like like because a lot of people don't interact with these type of people these are the good ones these are the good one this is pg county this is the you know these are the good ones these are the ones you know what i'm saying these are the good ones. pg county montclair new jersey yeah. the, these are yeah, the wakandans man <laughs> This is them, man, and they're terrible people. They want all these innocent people punished, and they don't even see it. They don't see the humanness in those people. Like, when they're saying everybody needs to be charged, they're not seeing the individual people being charged and losing their jobs and going to prison and all that stuff. They're just flailing like children, you know what I'm saying? Just... <laughs> just yeah, it's, uh... Sad man, and I don't think they see it. I don't, <laughs> and if you tell them, they'll look at you crazy. Oh yeah, like yeah, her. They're she, too dumb. Yeah, she doesn't realize that the fear that those women at that table next to her son must have had when the when the people told them when they went and said, "Hey, this guy's acting like a jackass over here." In the in the in the um the the the, the mater d was like, oh yeah, the police are on his way. We we're not we're not um approaching him because he has a gun. <laughs> it's like you know, so we're just waiting for the police to come handle him because he's got a gun. <laughs> they're just they're just honestly that too right dumb. there, yeah, that right there didn't register in her brain to realize that. It's right. almost like uh, they're kind of like the juice crew with the siege mentality, but minus the IQ. Mm. That's exactly how I feel about them. That's yeah. what sons are, just dumb juice crew. They, uh, yeah. they Notice how the reporter, no, no questions about the gun. Yeah. No, where right. did you get the gun? Was it a legal gun? Because I'll tell you what, they're saying you didn't commit a crime, but if he's walking around with a gun, that's a legal gun. That, that's a talent. That's a talent that the reporter doesn't even mention that. That that right there is a talent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man, though. I saw I don't know if you guys remember this. This was years ago when there was a, a white woman that was acting crazy on the beach and the cops tackled her and shit. It became big news. And the one thing the reporter asked that they never asked black people is why didn't you just comply? Yeah. <laughs> and I was no like, Whoa. It's a forbidden then, question. Then the lawyer stepped in. He was like, "That's a ridiculous question." I was like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah this is and, and and here's the thing: at some point, the parents felt threatened. You don't call the police if your son has a mental health crisis. You put his ass in the car and you drive him to whatever facility. She said she had a bed ready for him, so she's talking about a facility, right? So you put him in the car, you drive him to the facility. Nah, it, whatever was going on there, they was like, we need a fucking cop to come get this. Thing. And it's Damn, like, the, that's, if that's yeah. the genesis. That's the genesis of this whole situation, right? Them assessing that, yo, we gonna need a police officer here to deal with this. <laughs> yeah, they, they were still, scared. and they. Still, Still, still have no compassion or empathy that the people at the other location he went to, he left there and went to, could have felt the same way. The, the reality is, like, quite honestly, a good fraction of son, <laughs> young son males, like, probably belong in some sort of an institution, if we're being honest, for things to function even, like, halfway good. But well, one of those is called a prison. Like a no, lot I'm talking like minority report, prison. like preemptive, like like uh, like you got to identify like the the traits and the behaviors quickly before they like really fuck someone up or really shoot someone and just be like, yo, like we need to like, I don't know what like institutionalize them to like act more normal. I don't know, and, but uh, it'd be half the sun population. It wouldn't be half, but it's like, you know, like, I mean, they, they talk and bitch about it all the time Definitely when they talk about, like, 
disproportionate yeah. like uh suspensions or you know that son son kids have in school or you know disproportionate adhd diagnoses all that type of stuff yeah didn't it wasn't it minority port where tom cruise would like go in the tube and like figure yeah. out who was going to commit crime yeah his head would explode in atlanta yeah exactly it too, it wouldn't be there too too many images and he'd come out brain dead yeah that that movie was like made like kind of like i talked about Columbo, where all every, all the criminals yeah. were white and shit. they didn't have no they didn't have like think about just one black neighborhood like you ever been to a black <laughs> neighborhood where like like you know what i'm saying like like when you know the neighborhood kind of like i don't know if y'all ever did been there where you know they like you go to the rec center and all the young boys is there the old heads is there and it's like a hundred niggas that have been to jail or prison right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like a football like, game. Like a, yeah, a youth football game in a fucking black neighborhood. It's like, yo, it's like you're literally, if the stands are packed, there's like a hundred niggas there that have been to prison. Yeah. That's why I tell people, they say, we need eye for an eye criminal justice. I said, man, if you had eye for an eye, you'd have a lot of blind black people. <laughs> like every black person would be walking around with an eye patch. <laughs> That's yeah, when I lost man. my eye. Yeah, man. Let me, let me play this. He's putting his hands up. He's going to the ground, and then he's tased. So our question through the through the family and through the lawsuit mm -hmm. is, why was he encountered in such a way that uh, escalated to the point of him being shot ten times? Because nine wasn't enough. <laughs> You hear what she said? Now let's see how they answer. Because remember, they called the cops. <laughs> right. And, and, but it's it's like this is what I told you about constitutional carry. You you even though yeah you fuckers can't have that. Care, you you even though with constitutional carry, felons and people that are inebriated and also committing other crimes forfeit their constitutional carry as a police force you cannot go up to some people who are constitutionally carrying and 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 enforce those laws because like she said do you if of a white you know white guys so if you got a bunch of sons hanging out drinking 40s and smoking blunts and half of them got ankle monitors on and you're a cop and you ride past in the town that's constitutional carry you can't go over there because you didn't harass bob the fucking carpenter who, who's like fucking you know coming out of home depot with his fucking pistol with his, with his holster on his waist you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, because they're the I exact same thing. Even. You got to be perfect. You got to do you do one of them. You got to do one of them. It's just like no child left behind. You got to suspend one white kid for every fucking black gangbanger that's fucking fighting in your school. You got to suspend some, one of the white kids who's shivering in the corner and shit, teeth chattering. You gotta go spin one of them just to get rid of one of the black gang banks. In such a way that uh, escalated to the point of him being shot ten times. Absolutely, based off of the call that was made. Right. And I'm only saying that based off of the call that was made the first time and second time. The Where they gave a description of the person they wanted the cops to go. 
You can't even describe niggas now. God damn. He's using the description as evidence of racism. <laughs> when, when, listen. When black she guy, red me, shirt. Was he wearing a red shirt? Yes. Was he a black guy? Yes. Wow, well, it's racist. Think about this. If you're, think about when she called the police, right? The dispatcher picks up the phone. Yes, 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, I'd like you to come pick up my son. He's in the middle of a mental health crisis. We got a bed for him at XY facility, but we need the police to come pick him up and take him there. Okay, ma'am. Um, can you describe your son? Oh, he's an African American male. He's like that. I guarantee you that's how that call went. I guarantee you she had to give a description of her son too. These people are fucking evil, man. Yeah, pure oh, evil. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. If they got to release all this shit, they should release her phone call, too. Exactly. Based off of the call that was made the first time and second time, repeatedly saying a black man with spiky hair and appearing to have gold teeth. So because he was already being stereotyped, they didn't say he had a button-up shirt. He, was dressed he wasn't a, being described. He was being stereotyped. He was going to a business meeting. They didn't say any of that. They said a black man. He was going to a business. Oh. You call. You, hold on. She's trying to say that and they act like he was going to a business meeting. You had already called the police on the man that day earlier. A few hours earlier. Right. Is he having he a mental health crisis or is he going to a job fair? Guess what, though? She said she had a bed at a facility for him, not a business meeting. She told the cops, I have a bed at a mental health facility waiting for him. But the white people at the restaurant or whoever the fuck was at the restaurant was supposed to ask, assume he was going to a business meeting. <laughs> Damn. So because he was already being stereotyped, they didn't say he had a button-up shirt. He was dressed as if he was going to a business meeting. They didn't say any of that. They said a black man, repeatedly, spiky hair, and appears to have gold teeth. Ma'am, so, if everything had gone right, he would have gone to a mental institute and been a fucking padded room with a straitjacket under your request. That was the best case scenario. <laughs> So to answer your question, I think it would have been handled different if it was someone else. Not that I, yeah, feel, I, hate like, niggas, I, I though. feel like it's, you know, it's any racist or racism because that's not the case. Nigel, if you knew him, he was love to all people. His family, love to all people. What we do. Yeah, they're too people. far gone. So let's be clear. And now they're, now they're talking about how great of a people they are. They're well, just chasing the bag. The shittiest people you could ever imagine. These the good black people. The problem comes in when other people view us differently. And when you make a call that is threatening, threatening and also leads to my son's life, then why? What was the threat? Because he had spiky hair? He had a button up shirt? <laughs> the threat was his hair texture. Hair texture. That, that was the threat that he was posing, his hair texture. After she'd already called the cops on him. <laughs> these people are, these people are, they're evil and they're um, low IQ. So it's like they're low IQ, they, they, the empathy and the compassion and the thoughtfulness and the reflection and the self awareness. That's necessary. You know what I'm saying? To just yeah. be a functional human being, they don't have it. They're like a devil that was dropped on their head when they were a baby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what these people are. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Seems that way. They're actively trying to ruin pe the, the people. The cops aren't people to the, the cops that they're trying to get arrested and locked up and, you know, fired and whatever and charged and secure, all these people, they're not people to them. They think they're like, uh, like 
sentinels, like these oppressive, <laughs> like robotic <laughs> creatures that hunt down black people or something. Like they just, man, yeah, they're just like, yeah, just a hard group of people to deal with, man. Yeah. And this is like all of Blackistan, bro. Professional. Oh, exactly. exactly. Growing up, Blackistan, you like meet people like this just yep. everywhere, every day. Everywhere, bro. Yeah. These are the good ones. Yeah. Because he had spiky hair. He had a button up shirt that you didn't mention. He was dressed in business professional. Make sure you support the channel via PayPal, Cash App, or Super Chat. It's the only place you get this. And definitely hit the like button. He was eating a salad around other, you know, pedestrians around him. None of that was mentioned. So absolutely. I think it would be, would have been handled differently. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh oh, what she would tell her son. She a good mother would say, you know, well, I wish you would have done, I wish you would have. You know, done things right. I wish you to listen to us when we tried to tell you that we tried to send you to the mental institution. We had when we really got the bed for you. <laughs> oh, you know, waiting for the cops at the house and got in the car for the cops and drove down to the mental institution that we had set up for you. When you were still been alive, <laughs> we could get your silly ass rounded up. Yeah, man. She's not going to say that, though, I'm sure. I'm sorry. I couldn't say that. I'm sorry that I could not save you. That is one of my biggest regrets every day of my life, especially when the time comes around when I know he's no longer here. May 18th arrives. I replay that day over and over in my head of what I could have done differently. So if I could say anything to him is that I'm sorry as a mother that I couldn't save him. Meaning sorry as you call the cops. Yeah, I just I've always been able to talk to my son. And uh so he says he always was able to talk to his son. Well, but this time you needed the cops to come talk to him. So this was a different situation, man. Um, and you're a big dude, man. You you not only got the 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 fact that you was father, the authority figure, but you also got the size and strength for, over him, man. And you still needed the police to come do it. So you were scared, man, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. Nothing wrong with you, man. I just believe if I was if I was there, I would have been able to save you, man. That would have went down. So if you would have came to the folk of the child, you would have been able to save him. So here's the thing. He was at your house. Y'all got a bed, procured a bed for him at a mental facility. You just needed to get him there. At some point, you realized you couldn't get him there from your house. And it was so bad that you had to call the police. But if you were at the phone with the job, when he was acting like a jackass, you would have fixed everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that would have been the moment that he... <laughs> <sighs> Shit, Sad thing is that talk to an officer that works for Atlanta PD that works in that same precinct that was coming on shift after the shift of the officer. And he told me, he said, I guarantee you, if it happened on my shift, your son would still be alive today. Said, I'm not taking nothing away from the officers that did. I work with those officers. They're good officers, but I know for a fact that they don't know how to approach us. And he's saying us is meaning black men, because this is a black officer. Wait a second, but Atlanta, the majority of the cops are black. 
What do you, what are you talking about? How the fuck do you approach a black person differently that's a lunatic? And that's going back kind of to what Stephen A says shit. about black folks. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. stupid. They don't no, know how to you. approach us. It's that, it's that liberal racism, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what would have happened if his black ass was there. He would have been, it would have been Scorpion Squad time. This guy would have been <laughs> kicking the shit out of your son in the back of his fucking head after pulling three bullets into him. That's what it would have yeah. been. They don't know how to approach us. As you know, we a special case. We yeah, different. bro, they they say it, and then they call you racist for exactly like it's first, bro. First, yeah, they yeah. contradict themselves constantly. I'm not taking nothing away from the officers good there. I work in his office. They're good officers, but I know for a fact that. They don't know how to approach us. And he's saying us is meaning black men, because this was a black officer. And he said, Your son would be alive today if I would have if it would have happened on my ship, if I would have got there a little bit earlier. Because he would have killed that officer. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been alive, but the officer would have been dead. Yeah. I'm about to say that nigga can't guarantee uh, that. What the fuck? That nigga to your fucking face. He would have stomped your son's face. That kid would have looked like Emmett Till and that yeah, gasket all flat faced and shit. Like, man, that kid, that guy would have fucked your son up. Get the fuck out of here. These people are crazy, man. Like, earlier, I would have went in early. Your son would still be alive in your arms. And that's from the department, uh, the officer of the department. And, you know, I just hate it, man. It's like, the system failed my son. You know, mental health is real. It's really real. I think it needs to be taken more serious. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of people who have lost their lives because not enough training has been put in place. And I think my son would be here if the proper training would have been in place. Honestly. Always so, training. No. The, the they don't training. know what the fuck the training it is. They don't know what the fuck it is. But it, trust me, it's there. Yeah, like okay, so you're at, there's a restaurant, and there's a guy acting like a jackass, and he's got a gun. And you come in there, and yeah, like do you understand how much? It, like yo, they want million billions of dollars in training. Like you would literally have to set up a place, recreate that scene for all your trainees, all your recruits. You would have to like have like fucking actors and shit in the restaurant. <laughs> and shit. You'd have to have your recruits come in. All right. So here's the restaurant. <laughs> you have to have somebody playing a hostess, somebody playing a manager, somebody playing an unruly customer at the bar. And you'd have to like do this in every different scenario. And that would just be the fucking restaurant. I think you have to do it for fucking like, <laughs> traffic stop. You have to do it for the fucking club. You have to do it for the zoo. You have to do it for the... Like, like that. And even after all that, it still wouldn't do shit. <laughs> Fuck no. But then you would yeah. have like an entire like sun economy devoted to these sun actors and it would become like a cottage industry despite it doing nothing. <laughs> you know... Yo, if this if this fucking goes to court though, man, and that evidence is brought up, what that fucking dude said, they should they should bring the cops and be like, yeah, you got to point the cop out that said this. We're gonna bring right. him on the stand, and actually say, see if he fucking said this to you. Yo, you yeah. gotta give the cops green beret training for like average everyday sunmen. Like, do you under? I don't think they understand how fucking like ludicrous that sounds, bro. Also, the thing with sun men I seem to observe is like usually the best way to calm them down is say nothing. Mm. Mm. Like you just talking is already like mm. an affront to them. You just can't talk to sun men if they don't want you to, or else they're gonna chimp out. Yeah, like just get the fuck away from them. That's the basically you gotta yeah. leave. Yeah. Yeah, to a degree, yeah. The, 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 the yeah leaving, I'll tell you that leaving does work when they're yelling at you. You just walk away, make sure they can't see you no more, and turn around and they're gone. Yeah, you better get the fuck out of here, man. 
Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna talk shit on on they're gonna talk shit, but you just gotta like swallow your pride because they're gonna talk shit at you as you leave. Yeah, um, salute. <laughs> Salute to um my man Aster J, man. Aster J coming through, man. Um let me see what he said. God damn. Um he says, um hold on, I'm gonna get to that. But yeah, yeah. Go ahead, man. I'm I gotta find this. Yeah. But yeah. What was the name of this kid? Um Nigel. Cullings. Cullings. Yeah, salute to Ashley. He says, I hard to believe that Stephen A. Smith is taking seriously. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean <sighs> you have to take him seriously, man. He's a black man, man. Um Yeah, that's the it's part of the believe all sons shit where it's like they 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 get to tell you you gotta <laughs> treat them different because you know we got this unique fucking damn near like I can't even describe the, the type of experiences we have just because of our skin color and you're supposed to be like you know what you are right man I, I ain't even going I'm not going to question that at all you a black man yep I'm black man and I'm a victim and, and and therefore you have to treat me special and I don't have to return that courtesy and any way to you. What do we do? So after two years of fighting, of protesting, and now having to file a lawsuit, the ball is in the city of Atlanta's court. Uh, there's a lot of policies and procedures that's been changed because of other police involved situations, while the family of Nigel Cullen still wants transparency and justice. So it's incumbent upon the mayor and the district attorney to provide justice and transparency, release the tape, be clear with the citizens of Atlanta what happened to Nigel Cullen and make sure it never happens again by changing policy, by also changing laws that allow- So, so they want policies and laws changed. Christ. Do they understand like, what that does, like, yo, if every time something like this happens, you change the part, you destroy the whole system. It can't, it, it, it can't be constantly changed. It fractures it, it splinters it, and then it just collapses. Yeah, this yeah but they didn't build the system, so it's not surprising, right? It's just like... <laughs> yeah, this this why like I always... I'll go with my it's yeah, like a kid who point. asks you why, and then you answer, and then he says why, and it just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, but, and this this why I always I always try not to engage sons when like George Floyd moments happen. And they're like, yo, see, this shit always happens. And then when you say, yo, like like fucking five niggas get killed by unarmed <laughs> by cops every year, and they're like, man, oh so so what you trying to say? It's like, bro, it's not a, it's not a problem. That's what I'm trying to say. But you know, it's that's that's just it's not enough for them, bro. Nothing is enough, bro. Yeah. George Floyd, like we're better off without him. We don't need a George Floyd roaming the streets killing people. Like, what? Yeah, that like, was... just, like we don't need a George Floyd. And white people, like we seem to understand this. Like when our white versions of George Floyd die under questionable circumstances, no white person gives a fuck. Yeah, that was addition by subtraction. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely, man. Uh, let's let's <laughs> let's speak of the George, man. Uh, I think uh, I think we gotta see of uh, Jorge George Floyd biopic, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ.